couple of weeks ago, I passed the one year full time on the road mark. And um, I was so busy with my escaper convergence and hanging out with friends that I didn't get a video put together. <laughs> so I thought I would um, just talk about uh, one year full time on the road. Well, it's been amazing. I am so glad that I did this. I have no regrets. Um, I am loving the van. It has been working out really, really well. In the last year of being full-time on the road, I spent a little over $500 in camping fees. Almost 400 of that was in the first six months. <laughs> I wasn't as comfortable being out boondocking when I first started. Um, I wasn't as good at identifying places that I could boondock and a lot of the, that time I was in the Northern California coastal area and the boondocking just isn't as easy to come by there and the camp fees are really expensive like $35 for a dry camping spot in a state park. So that is why that's so high. I spent about $1,600 in fuel in the year, and I think that's not too bad. I am definitely reaping the benefits of, of the Sprinter because the Sprinter gets such good fuel economy. I think I spent $500 in maintenance on the van um, because I did an A-service uh, in December. I didn't add up and compare food um, because that's such an individual thing and I don't know that that's helpful to somebody else, but um, because I eat primarily organic, I'm very particular about the kinds of restaurants I'm willing to eat at. And so there have been a lot of times where I'm in the middle of pretty much nowhere and there are no restaurants that I am willing to eat at. And that was a huge money saving. Um, so yeah, I did have to, uh, let's see. So I left August 24th of 2017 in, I think it was in October, the end of October I decided to upgrade to Verizon. I was on Republic Wireless paying just $20 a month um, for cell service, for unlimited calls and, and uh, texts, and only one gig of data. And the first two months on the road, I just didn't have enough signal. So I did upgrade to Verizon, which bumped up my um, my cell bill quite a lot. It's now just over $100 a month. Um, but I also don't have a cable bill um, or, you know, an internet bill. I didn't really have a cable bill either I, before because I didn't watch TV. But, um, but the, you know, the internet bill is gone. So... So that's kind of a wash there. I visited 16 national parks in the year. I thought I was going to do a lot more national parks a lot faster, but um, I found that I preferred a slower pace. And I also found that, um, that I prefer people over places. So January 11th, I went to the Escapers annual bash in Quartzsite and I met the most amazing people and I ended up uh, caravanning with people most of the rest of the time. So since January 11th I have had 15 nights on my own. Uh, which I think is pretty amazing. I see people say, oh, I've got two weeks and I'm going to drive cross country. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, two weeks and I can barely get to Utah from Oregon. <laughs> it used to take me two days. So, um, so a lot slower travel. And I'm really happy with that. In my 12 month living in the van video, I did um, changes and things like that. So, um, so check that one out if you are interested in that. Uh, because nothing has changed since then other than I did one of the most brilliant and cheapest upgrades I've done to the van 
I um, I bought a two pack of levelers from the RV store and um, got myself to a place where I was completely 100% level and I stuck one on the dash and one on the side of a pillar of the driver's side so that I could see if I'm level side to side and front to back um, without getting out my phone and using the camper leveler app. Uh, that was working okay, but this, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And it was less than $10. <laughs> so uh, definitely a, a must-do upgrade that I haven't actually heard anybody do before in the van world. I generally don't use leveling blocks or anything. I have Anderson levelers that I got around the 15th of September last year. And the very first time I tried to use them, one of them broke. And I just was never in a place long enough to know where I was going to get be able to get mail, and I didn't know how long it was going to take for them to replace it. So um, this summer I finally got that replaced. Super simple process. I just had to fill out a form online and send them a couple of pictures. And then they just, no questions asked, sent me the replacement. Um, I rarely use those and partly because I'm not used to using them because the one was broken for almost a year. Usually I am just trying to level myself just by driving, just you know, moving where my tires are. So the, the stick on bubble levelers, game changer. I realized that the video that I filmed for my one year Nomad anniversary or nomadiversary, we call them. Didn't talk about where I've been, and so I wanna just give you just a little insight into where I've been. I started from Eugene, Oregon on August 24th, 2017. Headed to Lassen National Park. I went down, visited uh, some friends, dropped down into Nevada, and drove the loneliest highway, Highway 50. Um, there's only five towns, and all, not all of them have fuel, so you got to be prepared. Went to the Great Basin National Park, which is right on the edge of Nevada and Utah, uh, very high. I ended up getting a campground at 10,000 feet and ended up not being able to stay there because it was too high for me after coming from the Willamette Valley which is only like, I don't know, 100, 100 feet or something above sea level and to, to go and try and camp at 10,000 feet was a little too much, a little too fast. Um, that took me into Salt Lake City where I did my uh, doTERRA convention. There, what I do is I, um, I rent a house for my team every year. I just park my van in the driveway and they stay in the house and I stay in my van. After convention, I visited a couple of friends, one of whom I hadn't seen for over 20 years, and so that was amazing. I loved that. Um, it was like we'd hardly spent any time apart, and it was great. Um, gotta love those kind of friends. <laughs> then I met up with Brandon and Carenza of RV to Freedom and the amazing course called Roadmap to full-time RVing. We were at Antelope Island and then we went to Moab and I visited Canyonlands and Arches. And then I swooped into Colorado, did Colorado National Monument, which was my favorite national monument so far. Um, I love that you can walk along the edge of the cliff um, into the canyon. And there's a part where the canyon splits into three different ways. And if you yell there, you can get your voice to go around in all three of those canyons. It was really cool. From there, I went to Black Canyon of the Gunnison. This was amazing. It was a national park that I'd never heard of before. It's as deep as the na as uh, Grand Canyon, uh, but only 60 feet wide. So uh, very cool. And you can drive all the way down to the bottom of the canyon. Uh, from there, I went to Durango, Colorado. I was uh, planning on being there for two days, and I ended up being there for two weeks. Uh, such good food there. I was able to park my van and ride my bike around and um, just loved it, absolutely loved it. Um, lots of organic food there, lots of great restaurants, and three different grocery stores to buy organic food. A uh, really, really good place to visit. Then went to Mesa Verde, and then Hovenweep National Monument. And then from there I went to Monticello College. This is a tiny little college in eastern Utah where, um, so the, this is kind of cool. I'm going to spend just a minute on this one because it's so cool. Professor Shannon Brooks um, has started this little college. And when I went to visit, there were only five students. 
and they were constructing their buildings. They were growing their food. The students were making their own, uh, you know, their own meals. They were doing self-defense and classic Greek literature and Hebrew and Oh my gosh, it was just amazing. It was just a great visit. Um, from there, I did the Moki Dugway. I went up the Moki Dugway. I was so excited, but it wasn't quite as challenging as I'd wanted it to be. And then I went out, I was gonna boondock. I was still too new to boondocking to realize that if you didn't have cell signal in one spot, and there's reported cell signal to try other spots. So I tried the one spot, I didn't have signal, and so I left. <laughs> Ended up spending uh, many, many hours driving around trying to find signal because I had to work the next day. Stopped at a place and the guy, and I asked like, you know, how far to get AT&T signal? I still just had Republic Wireless as my phone. I had an AT&T hotspot. I didn't have a, a booster, so I didn't have the Wii Boost yet. And so I was really reliant on the AT&T and because my phone would run off of the hotspot. Guy's like, yeah, I think about 200 miles from here, you might be able to get AT&T. It's just like, ah, uh, okay, great. I thought I started driving in the direction that he recommended, um, but it was late at night and I went the wrong way. Ended up near um, Capitol Reef National Park and um, ended up stopping there in the morning to, to ask about cell signal. And she's like, oh, but there is uh, free Wi-Fi at the visitor center in town um, and so I went there was able to get my work done and able to uh, visit Capitol Reef a little bit then I drove down highway 12 in Utah oh my gosh do that <laughs> do that that is amazing um, the so Boulder Utah has amazing food very 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 good food and then this Highway 12 is one of the most scenic highways in the country. So the restaurant that I really like was Hell's Backbone. That's named after a part of this highway um, that is, well, a, a section of the highway is on this ridge called Hell's Backbone and there's a complete drop off on both sides. It was amazing. I loved it. Um, sorry about the wind noise. I'm, I'm in a beautiful spot. Decided to film. <laughs> Highway 12 was mostly going through Grand Staircase, Escalante National Monument, and so it's just amazing. I did end up driving 26 miles down a washboard road to go through some uh, some slot canyons. Uh, that was not great. I would not do that again. Loved the slot canyons, although the very first one, the peekaboo, I was really disappointed in myself because I couldn't get up. There was a little bit of a climb to get up into it and I just couldn't do it. Um, but I was able to go through Spooky and it was just cool. I love slot canyons. They're so fun. But that 26 mile washboard road was not fun and not worth it. Um, next time I decided that it wasn't worth the wear and tear on the van and it would be cheaper probably for me to just hire a shuttle to take me out there in a Jeep. From there I went to Bryce Canyon. Oh, that's my favorite national park so far. Um, when I was at Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park, I was thinking, oh, well, maybe Bryce isn't my favorite anymore. And then I went back to Bryce and I was like, oh no, it totally, it's totally still my favorite. Just amazing. I get so filled with emotion just walking up to the edge of the amphitheater and then to walk down in it um, and all those hoodoos, it's just incredible. From there, I was heading down to Flagstaff. I, um, I skipped Zion, I skipped, Grand Canyon and I went to uh, Flagstaff, met a couple of gals at a restaurant called Nomads that I met online on Facebook. There are a couple of Nomads as well. So that was fun, really good food and really good conversation. From Flagstaff, I went through Sedona. It was on Sunday, it was way too busy and it was not my favorite. Um, went and stayed at a great Boondockers welcome host site in Camp Verde, Arizona. They're five miles from Montezuma's Castle National Monument. A great, great boondocking host. They live in an air park <laughs> and their house is in part of their airplane hangar and the middle of this neighborhood is an air is a airstrip people driving their airplanes around the neighborhood all the time <laughs> it was very cool and they treated me like family it was a, a one of my favorite boondockers welcome hosts and then i went to my friend carol's uh, 60th birthday she ha hosted 
a women's retreat for her birthday and oh it was just perfect it was perfect for her it was perfect for everyone who went she does this um, blog called fuzzy red socks all about self-care and teaching women how to practice self-care. I got to do aroma touch sessions with everyone who wanted one. I think I did 13 sessions in a day and a half <laughs> and it was great. I loved it. It was so much fun and so fulfilling. And then from there I went to Jamie Diamond's van build party. Jamie is the creative behind Enigmatic Nomadics and he hosts this van build party every year near Lake Havasu City and it's a, a party where you can bring your van and bring your projects and um, you can sign up to have one of your projects done for you. Um, and then you can also collaborate with other people to get other projects done. That's where I met Seven Wanders the World and I learned how to film and edit for YouTube. I left early and went over to Petrified Forest National Park in Northeastern Arizona and decided to try my hand at YouTube and so that was my very first video. I think it turned out okay. <laughs> Seven was it was there to help me learn how to edit it myself. The day after I posted that uh, Jamie asked me if I had a YouTube channel. I'm like well yes I started it yesterday and uh, Seven was right there to back me up and said oh and it's good too. So Jamie invited me to be the guest vlogger for Enigmatic Nomadics the next day and uh, that's how my channel got started. Just the shout out from Jamie and the help from Seven. And from there, let's see, what did I do from there? Um, from there, I went back to my friend Carol's for Thanksgiving. Uh, let's see, how did that work? I met back up with Seven. We went to Joshua Tree and then I headed back to Oregon for Christmas. So I spent most of December last year in Oregon which was kind of weird. I remember thinking how busy my mind got right away uh, when I started to get back toward, you know, home, even though I don't really have a home base. I started thinking about the people I had to meet and the appointments I needed to make and, and all of that. Boy, life on the road is just so much more peaceful <laughs> than life in a town. <laughs> there was some really good learning there in spending the, the month of December in Oregon in that I learned just how well the van does in the cold weather. Um, so that was great. And it did great. I mean, it did really, really well. We had freezing rain and it was fine. I was cozy and comfy in there and really just didn't even want to leave. It was so nice. <laughs> From Christmas in Oregon, I headed down through Northern California and back over to Arizona for the Escapers Annual Bash. Uh, that started the 11th of January. So I did the Annual Bash, parts one and two. So part one was Quartzite, part two was American Girl Mine outside of Yuma. I did not do part three because they were um, driving into, um, into Baja, Mexico. And I was actually, I had to drive over to San Diego so that I could fly out of San Diego to go to Baja, Mexico for my niece's wedding. So I did that. And, um, and then I met back up with everyone, well not everyone, everyone, but a lot of people in Anza Borrego for my birthday. And then I started caravanning with uh, four of my nomadic escaper friends. We went to Santa Monica and we stayed at a little campground in Castaic. Um, not, not a great campground, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and then we went over to um, Lake Isabella and the Keysville SMRA, and I have a video on that being one of my favorite boondocking spots. And then from there we went to Alabama Hills all together. And then I separated from the group and um, went to Death Valley and then met up with a friend that I'd met at the van build party, Fiona, and um, her friend um, Tara. I uh, met them at Lake Mead, uh, Stewart's Point. We explored uh, Valley of Fire, a state park from there. Really great park. And then they left. From there, I um, had to start heading back to the LA area for a meeting. So I stopped at the Mojave National Preserve for a few nights. And then I met up with my friend Becky at White Owl Canyon Campground outside of Barstow for a couple of nights. And then I had another great Boondockers welcome experience in the LA area for my meeting. And then I met back up with Seven and my friend Brian back at Keysville and at the Kern River. And, um, and then uh, went to Sequoia 
Kings Canyon, Yosemite, and then headed home for my uncle's funeral. So I spent the entire summer in Oregon and Washington, and then back in Oregon, and back in Washington and back in Oregon. <laughs> I spent a whole month and a half in Corvallis getting some work done on my neck. I have some bulging discs whatever. And so there wasn't a lot going on there. Although I did win second place in a van build contest. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. And then um, my friend Becky came and stayed with me for a few nights in Corvallis. I was house sitting. And then when my friends came back from, uh, from their vacation, uh, we went and spent a wonderfully beautiful 4th of July at a private farm and a forest sanctuary outside of Monmouth, Oregon. And uh, then we headed up, um, and some of this you've already seen, we headed up to, um, to Tillamook and had our day of ice cream and um, then did the Olympic Peninsula. Uh, went out to Cape Flattery, which is the northwesternmost point on the contiguous United States. Went around and did um, Olympic National Park, different places. I still have a video that I want to edit for you for that. I stayed with my dad, and then Becky went on her way, and uh, I continued on. I took the Galavan on the ferry and uh, visited my daughter and her a boyfriend, hung out with my friend Amber in Anacortes, and then headed over for a family reunion um, in Mesa, uh, Washington. Then um, back down and went over to, um, actually started our first van build client. Um, so met, met with her in Leeburg, Oregon, and then headed over to the Escapers Central Oregon Convergence. And from there, uh, went up and spent, oh, I think about a week and a half actually, uh, at the base of Mount Hood. My dear friend Brian was the campground host at Frog Lake this year. And so I just pretty much uh, finished out his season with him, uh, just hanging out with him. Uh, my online friend Debbie came and she's in an awesome van and um, she's just such a positive, fun person. From there, I went to Burns and spent a few nights with my friend there, got smoked out, ended up heading to Idaho and ended up spending a few nights in, outside of Ketchum in this amazing boondock, boondocking spot. I left there yesterday and came here. I'm now in southern Idaho and uh, heading to Salt Lake City once again for the doTERRA annual convention. And that's been my year. It's been amazing. I'm looking forward to many more years on the road. I absolutely love this lifestyle. Do not listen to people on YouTube who are fear-mongering. Um, they are just doing it so they can have a viral video. Um, not a great reason to um, scare a lot of women out of this amazing lifestyle. So yeah, that's been my year. And I am looking forward to bringing you along on this upcoming year. This is Joni with the Galavan. Enjoy your journey.